Though I'm no expert in this particular field, I've got to assume that right now, Japanese boxing, historically speaking, it is doing very nicely. You've got Kenshiro Taraji, we've still got Kazuto Ioka, we've of course got Naoya Inui, who's white hot at the moment at 1-2-2. We've got his brother, Takuma Inui, who's just defeating Yerwin Ankahas. And now add to that new WBC bantamweight champion, Junto Nakatani. His pretty dismissive performance against Alejandro Santiago now lifts his record to a perfect 27-0 and 20 knockouts. The pretty diminutive Mexican, whose nickname I'm pretty sure refers to his small stature, was game. He tried to do what he could, but clearly outmatched and not able to solve the conundrum of the distance that Nakatani can create between himself and the opponent, and just the power which definitely has carried up. It's funny to see, but Nakatani always opts for this very wide stance. He pretty much likes to get as low as the opponent, which in this case is very low. A difference of, say, what, 5'2", five, 5'3", five, and 5'7", in this weight class, is quite a difference in height. Nakatani has that powerful wide stance. You think it's maybe too wide, but he still moves quite nimbly. He doesn't jab solidly that often. He prefers to blind you. He moves it up and down. He tries to use a bit of misdirection. He'll uh, feint to hook round your guard. It's all really about trying to set up that big left hand. The left itself has quite a bit of versatility. Of course, he'll throw it down the pipe, or he'll loop it to the chin, or he'll loop it to the body, as he did in his previous fight to Santiago against Arhi Cortez, catching him with a perfect solar plexus punch. And because a lot of his energy seems to be dedicated towards trying to set up that big back hand, He's quite a fan of the 2-1, of course the inverse of the classic 1-2. So you throw your backhand first, confusing the expected order of things, and then you twist back into your lead hand, giving it extra power, and you finish properly on balance and with your shape again. There was a moment near the end of round 2, and in spots during round 4, where Santiago managed to breach Nakatani's defences, perhaps showing that the mid-range stuff and close-up doesn't suit him. But then he was pretty unflustered, and he always managed to get it back to his preferred distance, putting Santiago in a bit of a no-man's land, and finishing things in round six after winning every round was probably the kind of clinical performance not many of us were expecting. Even if we favoured Nakatani, that was a head-turning performance. And such a good performance inevitably brings with it the question as to who is the best bantamweight on the planet right now. There are a few belt holders who have got to do a bit of work first if they want to become undisputed like Naoya Anui was. But in terms of just how they look, the eye test, the perceived effectiveness of each respective champion, if you wanted to put Junto Nakatani in pole position right now, I couldn't argue. We've got Emmanuel Rodriguez, IBF champion, a guy who I felt has always been a little bit underrated because of the way Naoya just completely dealt with him. He didn't lose, of course, that fight to Gabayo, so really he only has that one loss. He's looked pretty good since then, though while I would be very interested to see how he would approach Nakatani, of course he's, he's a lot longer and has more comparable dimensions than, than Santiago does. He is rumoured to be fighting another Japanese, Ryozuki Nashida, which won't be an easy fight. The other obvious fight is against WBO champion Jason Maloney, of course, bigger brother of Andrew, who got absolutely splattered by Nakatani last year in arguably the KO of the year. So that fight would make a lot of sense, and I'm sure a lot of money, while Maloney continues to wait for his own revenge against Emmanuel Rodriguez, who he dropped a split decision to a few years ago in that Super Series tournament. The really interesting hypothetical, though, is whether or not Nakatani tries to stay here at 118 and become undisputed, or he fast-tracks himself to 122 because he does have that kind of long frame, which you could see probably going up to featherweight, if the power does continue to carry. Well, then we've got a possible all-Japanese showdown against the monster. And the reason I just put out my rangefinder here with this hypothetical is that although Naoya does have a very solid 2024 setup in which he's going to be aiming to take out the majority of the top five at 1 2 2, because he is going to be installed as the heavy favourite every time, we are still kind of looking on the horizon 
uh, as wishful fans for that, you know, new gunslinger who can maybe cause some trouble. Somebody with something a bit different about them. Somebody who could drum up that excitement where you're thinking, God, this guy's really got a chance. And so I'm hoping Nakatani can continue to grow. He's a guy who doesn't have the overall skill set of Inui. Let's just say it point blank. He doesn't quite have the speed. But he is an interesting rangy fighter who has a lot of pop. And if nothing else, it being an all Japanese clash, that would be fun. In the immediate future, I think the fight against Jason Maloney makes all the sense unification, possible revenge for Maloney's little bro, Nakatani going from strength to strength. He still looks almost a little bit malnourished here at 118 pounds. There's definitely potential to go up in weight. It's just a question of how quickly he'd want to jump up again. I am, though, quite interested to hear from those who are better versed in Nakatani than I am, those of you who have been following his career from day one. What did you make of that performance? It certainly seemed like a very clean one. Was it the best of his career? Do you think he is the best bantamweight on the planet right now? If he chooses to stay here, has he got the best chance of becoming undisputed? And if he continues to develop at this current rate, still only being 26, could you see him bringing some heat to Naoya Inui in the future if they do happen to cross paths? Spoons up.